I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 15 years. In this video, we will go over most of the possibilities as to why teeth become sensitive and painful at night when lying down. So like and subscribe if you have teeth. Now, there are various routes or pathways of teeth pain due to lying down. Let's start with pulpitis or inflammation of the pulp chamber in the center of the tooth. So maybe you have hit your tooth pretty hard or maybe you have tooth decay that's about to reach the pulp chamber or something else going on. How your body responds is it tries to send inflammation to try and heal the tooth or stop whatever is going on. But then what happens is this creates a pressure in your tooth and oftentimes will make it sensitive to cold or other things. This pain or pressure in the tooth is what we call pulpitis. Okay, so what's important to know is that for some people that have pulpitis, when they lay down, this increases pressure to the head but it also further increases pressure into the tooth. So now, not only do you have inflammation in your tooth, you have increased inflammation in your tooth. These people will feel this increased inflammation as a throbbing or aching in the tooth. If you have pulpitis, there are two types, reversible and irreversible pulpitis. Reversible means the tooth will possibly heal itself and eventually go away. Irreversible pulpitis means the inflammation in the tooth will not eventually go away and eventually you will need a root canal to save the tooth. A vitality or a cold test by a dentist will diagnose whether the tooth is reversible or irreversible. My video on cold sensitivity goes more over this on how to tell which is which. The bad news is, is that reversible pulpitis is really only possibly reversible. You see, anytime you have reversible pulpitis, it can develop into irreversible pulpitis if the tooth doesn't eventually heal itself. I do have a technique with my patients so that their reversible pulpitis doesn't progress into irreversible pulpitis most of the time. I have them take over-the-counter ibuprofen three times a day for three days. And that's just one thing I tell some of my patients to do to reduce the inflammation and help the tooth stay in that reversible pulpitis zone. That ibuprofen is the best way to get your tooth to calm down, but besides that, if you don't want your tooth to hurt in the meantime, your best shot is to just prop your head up while you're sleeping at night. And that way you won't have that increased in pressure and increased inflammation in your tooth. But now let's move on to the next possible pathway of nighttime tooth pain and it's a lot like pulpitis. In fact, if you don't treat irreversible pulpitis, the tooth will eventually become infected and develop an abscess. And this abscess is another cause of pain when lying down. What happens is, is that the tooth doesn't have any blood supply to the center of the tooth anymore because it's died. And so you can't send the appropriate things to heal any infection in the tooth. So infection takes over the center canal of the tooth. But now what happens that the infection is in the center of the tooth, it will then start to spread outward. And then once the infection spreads outward, it starts eating away at the bone and other tissues around the tooth. And it creates a pocket of infection called an abscess. Just like pulpitis, when laying down, the increased blood pressure to the head will also increase the inflammation of that pocket of infection and will normally manifest as throbbing in your teeth gums or jaw at nighttime when lying down. For some, it's almost like you can feel a heartbeat in your tooth or your jaw. A dental abscess, just like irreversible pulpitis, requires a root canal or extraction to take care of the abscess. Antibiotics will only temporarily reduce the infection in the jaw because when a tooth dies, once again, it loses its blood supply and it can't reach the infection inside the tooth, which again is the source of the infection. So once again, with antibiotics, your pain may go away for a little bit, but it just comes back once again after you're done with the antibiotics. Oh, and again, propping your head up in the meantime will help to reduce the pain at night when sleeping, so hopefully you can get some rest. Before I go on to probably the most common cause of pain when lying down, everybody should watch my video on the best way to brush and floss your teeth daily to avoid plaque, cavities, and gum disease. My favorite floss, toothbrush, and toothpaste and all dental care products are linked to in the description of this YouTube video. But if you watch my daily tooth care routine video, you will see how you can get stunning results 
cleaning your teeth each and every day to get things almost spotless. I recommend you watch that and it will pop up at the end of this video. The next mechanism of nighttime tooth pain is clenching and grinding, which causes inflammation in the ligaments that hold your teeth into place. Now, you may not know this, but your tooth has little ligaments right or all the way around it that do hold your tooth into place. When these ligaments become inflamed from increased pressure from clenching and grinding, this can cause your teeth to ache and to throb at night when lying down. Most people clench and grind their teeth at night when they sleep, but it can happen during the daytime too. Some people do it more than others, and then some people will do it at certain points in their life more than other times. In fact, most people actually clench their teeth at least a little bit at night. And most people don't even know they're clenching and grinding at night when they're doing it. Interestingly, even people that snore will temporarily clench their teeth at night, which is your body's reaction to try and keep the jaw forward and open the airway. What happens is, is once you enter into a deeper sleep, you stop clenching and everything falls back and you start snoring again. What's interesting is that clenching your teeth and tooth ligament inflammation can kind of be a, a vicious cycle. You see, the act of clenching sometimes can temporarily make the pain in your ligaments feel better, but later, this increases the inflammation and pain in the tooth ligaments, thus causing more pain and creating a vicious cycle of pain. Now, one of the ways I'm able to tell when people have tooth ligament pain, they'll come into my office and they'll tell me that they have pain in their teeth, but a lot of times they just can't locate where it's at. They think it's somewhere on their side and on their bottom. And while this can be other things, one of my first things to think about and to rule out is tooth ligament pain because it's so common for people that clench their teeth and get inflammation in their ligaments to not be able to know where the pain is coming from. But that being said, sometimes it can just be one or two teeth that are taking the brunt of force when you're clenching and grinding your teeth. So it's not a 100% rule, but I'd say it's like an 80% rule for people that are clenching their teeth that it's hard to locate. Now, another thing I look for when patients come in is that they'll tell me that the pain normally starts to coincide with some nighttime or morning soreness routine, depending on how your body responds. For example, someone might say, I get the pain uh, every night in the middle of the night, or they say they get the pain 30 minutes after they wake up or so on. Another thing that corresponds with this kind of pain is a lot of people will say that that the pain comes and goes for a day or a week at a time and then goes away and maybe in another day or week or month it comes back for another day or week at a time. Once again, these can all be different things as well, but they're very common to tooth ligament pain. If you have inflamed ligaments due to grinding and clenching, I have a full video on this, but here's what I have my patients do if they have clenching and grinding issues. I start off by having them just give it a little time and see if it goes away on its own. Ibuprofen will normally help with the inflammation in the meantime. Then there are a few things to pinpoint that can possibly be triggering the excessive amount of clenching. And you should go into my video about clenching and grinding to know all of the things. The most common thing I see is people taking too many vitamins. The main culprits seem to be vitamin D, calcium, and metals like zinc and iron. If these are not doctor prescribed, I have my patients go on a two week hiatus of all vitamins. I have seen this work about half of the time for people taking vitamins that also have clenching pain. Half the people that have both clenching pain and are simultaneously taking vitamins, about half of them this relieves their problem. Now, even if they have been taking vitamins for a long time and this is a recent issue, I still see it routinely be the cause and you'd be surprised at how many times this helps. Now, I am not against vitamins. I take vitamins, I even take vitamin D. But for some people, even a little is just too much. Like vitamins, medications are another common issue that can start excessive clenching. I would ask your doctor about your meds if you can't find any other thing that's causing you to clench. Sometimes there are alternatives that you can try. Another thing causing the clenching could be a bad sleeping position or even hard or memory foam pillows. Sometimes when you sleep in an unfavorable position, it will tire out and make sore muscles around your neck and your back. And then what will happen Happen is your jaw will try and compensate for those tired muscles and that bad sleeping position and it too will become sore and tired. This can be especially true like I said for hard memory foam pillows that push your head too far forward. But 
any sleeping position, if it's just not right for you, could possibly po cause this. So I would try sleeping in a different position. Stress also causes clenching, so reduce that however you need to do that in your life. Also, extreme workouts and diets can also cause clenching likely due to some sort of imbalance in the body of hormones. Now, if you tried all of those to get rid of your clenching, or if they just don't apply to you and the pain persists, then there are a few interventions we as dentists can do. Most dentists can make night guards to evenly distribute the pressure of clenching on all of your teeth and onto the night guard instead of just a few teeth that are causing ligament pain. Or in my practice, what I do is I do botulinum toxin or Botox for jaw pain that reduces the amount of involuntary or excessive clenching. I have found that Botox reduces pain from clenching more consistently than night guards. One more note, if clenching pain is limited to just one or two teeth, sometimes a dentist can slightly file down those teeth, just a few microns to reduce the pressure that goes on them and to give you relief from the tooth ligament pain. Remember, my favorite toothbrush, floss, toothpaste, and other dental products are linked to below this YouTube video. Everyone should watch my daily tooth care routine video I have posted now, and I will show you in that video why it is the best way to brush, floss, and more. Now, this video is part of a larger oral pain series that I'm doing, so you can match the symptoms we talked about here and watch more videos on a possible diagnosis and treatments. That way you can further narrow down and find the cause of your pain and hopefully find a remedy and see a dentist possibly that can provide you an official diagnosis and treatment. If in Southern California, my dental office is linked to below. Like and subscribe if you have teeth. All right, prop your head up at night if you're having that. Don't forget to prop your head up.